welcome back. So after much debate and tons of comments, I figured out that this is a vlog. Yeah, it's a vlog. It's mostly going to be me cooking though and baking, you know. Um, and those episodes will be called Eat Your Feelings. So this is episode one of Eat Your Feelings, and I'm going to be making something that I think my best friend came up with. He just asked me about it, so he was just like, fondue, amazing, bruschetta, amazing. Is there such thing as a bruschetta fondue? And I was like, hmm, I don't know, probably? I could look for a recipe, but instead of doing that... I will be making a recipe. So that's what we're doing now. So first I have to make the bruschetta and as I don't recall if I stated it or not, and I'm not going to go back and watch the other video. So I don't like sharing my recipes. I'm trying to get over that. I will be sharing all of the recipes. If by chance you see it or you, you know, you're hearing it and you're like, Oh, that sounds good. I'll put the recipe, um, in the description and then, um, yeah, so, and then you can try it, and you can tell me if you like it, or ask questions about it, even. Um, so, yeah, I have some culinary arts schooling, um, and uh, I had a bakery for, a, well, not a bakery, I had a baking business, an online baking business, for, just crushing the garlic, um, for, years. I don't even know offhand, but, um, so I have some idea what I'm talking about. Um, I don't have as much idea as I would have if I would have finished culinary school, but that's okay. Um, uh, I cook what I like, how I like it. It probably won't always be the best technique. So I, um, will be cooking and baking different things that I like or that my friends and family have grown to like over the years. I'm going here. I'm going to need to talk to you. Or need to see you anyway so right now I'm doing the garlic um, and if other chefs bakers ones with full degrees come at me for technique just keep it to yourself keep it to yourself for fun it's for having fun cooking should be fun and y'all make it less fun and I used to be one of you. I take garlic. I never like to give measurements for garlic because everyone, all the good people, <laughs> know that there's no such thing as limiting how much garlic is in something. My uh, soups and stocks teacher did not agree and um, I did not do well in my technical in school because I added too much garlic to my marinara sauce, which So, for what I'm doing, I use three cloves. Okay. Mincing, or chop as little as you need to. You know, as little as you want. You want to bite on a big old chunk of raw garlic? Do you, man. So, then I do onion. It's a yellow onion. Now, I was in school a really long time ago. I'm 33. <laughs> so, um, I don't remember everything as I should. So I guess that doesn't matter, right? Like, why, what, what would I need it for? I don't think I'm gonna make something for my son and he's gonna tell me that I did my rainbow cut wrong, so. So, we'll say half of a medium yellow one. That's what I'm gonna do. Shut up first before you make your fondue because, you know, you eat fondue like right away. Plus, uh, you want the bruschetta so that all the flavors can get together. And marry and have children. And be delicious. So, a small dice. Um, it's a strong onion. These onions. I'm trying to make them look like a fool. Color again, it's the same as the garlic. Make them as big as you want. You want giant chunks of raw onion? Probably don't. You know, don't don't do big chunks of raw onion. I don't know anyone that would want that. 
I mean, unless you do. And I don't usually use cherry tomatoes. I like having a mix of colors. Um, like, the like deeper brownish reddish ones, which these ones aren't really that much. No, see, they just like, there's some in there that are like, I think they're called Twilight, and they're like a brownish deep red color. Um, and then the yellow ones, and then just regular ones. Just I like yellow tomatoes mixed in to uh, the red ones for my bruschetta, but I couldn't find big ones, uh, you know, regular size. So I just did cherry tomatoes. So we're going to speed this up. And then once I finish, I'll be back. to see how the like one's a deeper reddish brown it's actually darker in person but anyway of cutting tomatoes so sitting here I was thinking about back when I was in uh, college when I was in culinary school and you could have piercings especially um, like in your nose or uh, in your tongue which I had both um, so I put um, like a clear one I forget what they're called it's like the clear in, in my because you can have the clear one in there you know you they didn't want to see that you had one um, but then they couldn't also ask you to like take your piercings out. So, um, so anyway, so I had a clear one in and I couldn't find one for my nose. I don't know why, but I couldn't. So, um, my one teacher, she gave me such a hard time about it. And I was like, I can't find one. If you find one, get it and give it to me and then I'll put it in. And she just like really needed to drive her her point home so like she was just going at it and we like she goes on and on enough that like I just shout at her and I'm like what is what is the problem why is it a problem I'm not in an actual restaurant tell so no one can see me right now we're just in class why does it matter so she so she goes on to tell me that <laughs> when she was in school a fellow student had their nose ring um, and it was like a pretty big like gemstone, you know, uh, done, whatever. And they fell. And when they fell, the way that it happened, which it's gonna sound ridiculous, but when I tell you that most of the, mo like some of the most absurd things, <laughs> when people get hurt in culinary school or just in a kitchen in general, it is some of the weirdest things you've ever heard. And you're just like, like for instance, there was a girl in my class who we like we had apple cores and it was you know part of the thing you had to learn how to use it well who doesn't know how to use one this girl this girl didn't know how to use one so she had an apple in her hand and she just like stabbed it down and it went into her hand and I was like to the hospital she went so there's things that like there is no common sense like there's specifically in kitchens or culinary art school fell caught her nose stud on the corner of the stainless steel table and ripped it out and it wasn't like an l-shaped one it was one of those like corkscrew ones and it apparently pulled like a significant chunk out of her face right uh, i don't know how much of that's the truth but all right uh, i cut all my tomato the cherry tomato and then I halved the halves so I quartered them and then I diced them you know two three times or whatever um so now we're going to add uh fresh basil which it doesn't have to be fresh I don't want to be one of those people but we all know fresh is better so if you can get it get it if you can't whatever it's still gonna taste really good um so we're gonna do I'm gonna do one of my favorite things and it stuck with me 
Um, so you sandwich the leaves together, right? And wash them, don't be gross. Anyway, you stack them together, right? That be a little boat. Okay, see? And then you're just gonna slice it as thin as you can. And it's called a chiffonade. Oh, it's so fancy. So that's a re it comes apart. So now we just use salt, pepper, and olive oil. That's all that's left. So um, I usually always use sea salt. I just like it better. Uh, but use what you got. Don't go, don't go buy special stuff. Start with a teaspoon. That's usually like a good go-to. So a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. Extra virgin olive oil. A fourth of a cup. Measure a fourth of a cup. Use some of it. <laughs> See how much it comes together, how much you like it. Uh, if it seems dry, then add the rest. I know you need it. Cover, also grab, and uh, put it in the fridge. Ideally, you want overnight, but at least a couple hours. And popping my son said he wanted popcorn. This is not a distraction free zone, so sorry about it. So now we are going to do the fondue. And um, I make my fondue with wine. I believe that most if not all are made with wine. Uh, I know there's some people out there that don't believe that you can cook out the alcohol. You can, but uh, I'm not here to convince you. Either way, I'm gonna do what I do. So, um, if you don't wanna use wine, you're gonna have to look up a substitution. I'm sorry. We're using an enameled um, cast iron thing or a fondue pot. Um, it is a little technique to take a garlic clove, a raw garlic clove, you know, cut a little bit off the bottom, and then you're just gonna rub it along the sides and the bottom of it. It just like, you know, helps infuse your cheeses and stuff with extra garlic, because like I said, garlic is everything and we need it and everything. Of a dry white wine. Um, don't do a sweet wine because, don't, because I said don't. So I'm gonna take, um, instead of just Gruyere in Swiss, I'm going to, it's such a unique sharp flavor. So you wanna keep the Gruyere and cut out um, some of the extra if you're trying to like change it up or like maybe if you're doing a cheddar one or something. So I'm gonna take half of the regular out and I'm gonna put in a half, um, or I'm gonna replace it with shredded mozzarella. Don't use fresh mozzarella. It's not gonna give you the consistency that you want. It's gonna be weird, so don't do that. I found smoked Gruyere, which is delicious, so. I'm gonna shred these real fast. Cheese. And before anyone asks, better to hand shred it. It's a pain to shred it. It just makes it better. I have no other reasoning. So you want about a tablespoon Okay, and then a teaspoon. I think you mix it and then I'll get on all the cheeses. Mix the cornstarch into the cheese. Heat, I'm gonna add my wine and I'm gonna let cook come to a boil. Cause we're going to cook out the alcohol, like pepper and nutmeg, just a little bit. When you have bruschetta, usually, it comes with toasted bread. So I'm going to cut the baguette, I'm gonna toast it uh, and then usually, it's rubbed with a garlic clove. So I'm gonna do that. That's how I'm gonna do my bread. I take my bread and I oiled with olive oil, both sides of it, and we stick it in a pan. It starts to see, like when you start to see it melting down, obviously you're gonna add more cheese. I should say, um, I've never added mozzarella, to a fondue before, so I don't really know what it's gonna do. In the off chance that I melt all of this down and it ends up looking real freaking weird, whoops. I added about half of the whole amount and did that, and then I did like, you know, half of the half that was left. It's good, and we'll just go ahead and add the rest. So come together. Let 
looking at it, um, if we would have added uh, any more mozzarella, I think it would have went wonky. So I'm glad that we didn't. So we're gonna add the pepper and the nutmeg. You don't need a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six grams. Very little, as you can see. And the nutmeg is even less. Nutmeg, if I tell you, to, if I tell you, you can leave it out. If you don't have the nutmeg, it's still going to taste good. It's melted cheese. So no pressure, but maybe the next time you're at the store, grab a little thing of nutmeg just so that you have it because Alfredo sauce is another one that takes the smallest amount of nutmeg, but man, does it amp it up. Take your baguettes, even if they're burnt. They're a little dark, they're a little dark. That's okay. Take your raw garlic and you're just gonna rub it on top. And as it sits longer, it's going to accumulate juices, of course. Um, you use a lot of things that have a lot of water, so uh, drain it, but don't put it through a strainer. Just, you know, hold your hand on the edge and oh, oh it looks so good. Oh. <gasps> okay. See how loose it is? Fantastic, perfect for dipping. Uh, put a nice big scoop, okay, and I have balsamic vinegar, so just a little, right on top, and if you think it's too much, it probably is, way to go, <laughs> just kidding, uh, fresh basil leaf, I was going to fry it and put it on top, but I forgot up until right this moment, so now we just have that, look, oh, it's going to be so good, okay, let's try it. Oh man, can you see the steam? A little bit. What? That is amazing. Also, make sure to try the bruschetta on its own. You should probably taste it before you put it on to see if it needs more salt. Right. So. I hope you guys try it. It's so good. Okay, so this is going to wrap it up. This is going to be it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to do this. This is so much fun. And, um, I don't know, maybe I'll just make up recipes and that's what I'll make? I don't know. doesn't matter. Um, I'll put the recipe in the description if you want it. And yeah, let me know how you like it if you make it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.